the 13th Amendment, a chemical tragedy, and the Greensboro sit-ins are all on this day. Welcome back to On This Day. Today's date is February 1st, 2022. It is the 32nd day of the year. There are 333 days left in 2022. It's your fifth Tuesday in your sixth week and the 43rd day of winter. If today's your birthday, your birthstone is an amethyst. Today is National Get Up Day. National Get Up Day on February 1st offers the opportunity to share inspiring stories and perseverance. This day reminds us to pick ourselves up when we've fallen and give it another go. I've never heard of this day. Sounds pretty cool to me, though. I mean, we've all hit failures in our life, and, you know, it continues to be a failure unless you try and try again, as the old saying goes. All right, let's see what else February 1st has given us. 1865, President Abraham Lincoln signs the 13th Amendment to the United States Constitution. Most states ratified it the same year, 1865, but there was a few holdouts that didn't do this right away, like Texas in 1870, they finally did it, Delaware did it in 1901, and Kentucky, they waited. They weren't really sure if this was going to stick or not, and they held out until 1976. And our old friend Mississippi, well, they really never did it until they were threatened with the loss of federal funding, so in 1995, on March 16th, actually, they ratified the 13th Amendment, 1995. They didn't certify it and actually finally recognize it completely until February 7th, 2013. 1893, Thomas Edison finishes construction of the first motion picture studio. It is called the Black Maria in West Orange, New Jersey. 1942, World War II, the U.S. Navy conducts the Marshall and Gilbert Island Raids. This is the first offensive action by the United States against Japanese forces in the Pacific Theater. What was interesting, well, there was a ton of interesting stuff about this, but the Japanese propaganda to the locals in the Marshall and Gilbert Islands, that they were being invaded by U.S. Marines. U.S. Marines were not like U.S army soldiers, and as they kind of made it sound like respectable military units, they told the locals that the Marines were comprised of the mentally ill and rapists let out of prison. As you can imagine, this scared the hell out of the locals. Sadly, when the Marines showed up on some of these islands, a lot of the locals were committing suicide because they were in this horrible fear that these total nut job degenerates had just landed on their island and they were about to be living in hell for however long. 1960, four black students staged the first of the Greensboro sit-ins at a lunch counter in Greensboro, North Carolina. 1991, a runway collision between U.S. Air Flight 1493 and Skyway Flight 5569 at Los Angeles International Airport results in the death of 34 people and injures 30 others. 1992, the chief judicial magistrate of Bhopal, India's court declares Warren Anderson, ex-CEO of Union Carbide, a fugitive under Indian law for failing to appear at the Bhopal disaster case. <laughs> If you don't remember this, the Bhopal disaster, also referred to as the Bhopal gas tragedy, was a gas leak incident on the night of December 2nd, 1984 and into the morning of December 3rd. And it was at the Union Carbide India Limited pesticide plant in Bhopal, India. This is considered one of the world's worst industrial accidents. Over 500,000 people were exposed to methyl isocyanate, or MIC, gas. This is an extremely toxic substance, and it basically filtered out into the town right outside the plant, and it was pretty much a slum. People didn't have the luxury of windows, and in some cases, doors, to keep the chemical out when it actually spilled over from the plant. So this disaster was caused because of greed and trying to cut corners to save a buck. The chemicals that this plant produced were no longer as profitable as they used to be. I mean, there were other pesticides out, and this plant was sort of losing money so they were encouraged to start making money by cutting some corners, cutting staff. And around 1983, most workers at the plant say they kind of quit focusing on safety and started focusing on how to make the plant profitable again so they could all keep their jobs. One of the cost-cutting methods they used was to get away from using American-trained engineers who were expensive, and they ran the plant. Well, they started getting Indian locals who may or may not have been as experienced, but they just, in the court case, were found to be not as qualified as the Americans were. So, in the late night of 
December 2nd, 1984, they started having pressure problems with one of the tanks. They did their normal things to try and control the pressure in the tank and it wasn't working, so they started releasing the gas through a relief valve at the top of the tank, which is standard for this type of situation. This is not an ideal situation, but one of the things they do to limit the damage or the cloud that's coming out of this chemical is to use a hose to water down the vapor coming out of this valve. They didn't have enough water pressure. They couldn't get the water to the vapor, so it was just creating this cloud that was spilling out into the slum just outside the gate of the plant. It got so bad that workers started fleeing the plant, and then they finally told the locals that, you know, there's something bad going on. And of course, all the locals came out of their huts to see what was going on, and that's when a lot of the problems started. In total, they figured they had about 550,000 non-fatal injuries with in between 4,000 and 16,000 deaths, along with all the animals that were in the neighborhood. Everyone's trees died, all the grass died. This was bad. The CEO of Union Carbide at the time, who was Warren Anderson, decided a couple days later to go see the damage and find out what was going on and just get on the ground and see what's happening. When he got there, he was put on house arrest and then he fled the country. A lot of the people that were running this plant were eventually found guilty of various safety violations and were given fines and some went to prison. But there were eight former employees who were also convicted and they were set to do time, but they all died before the judgment was actually passed. How'd they die? Complications from the chemical spill. The Indian government and different organization sued Warren Anderson in the United States, but the United States court said, no, this is an Indian matter. Take it up in Indian courts. Well, he never showed up for the court date, so they issued warrants for him. The Indian government tried to extradite him to India from the United States. The United States turned them down, and in August of 2009, they had another warrant put out for him. Warren Anderson died on September 29th, 2014 at the age of 92, never making it back to India to face the charges. 1996, the Communications Decency Act is passed by the U.S. Congress. 1998, Rear Admiral Lillian E. Fishburne becomes the first female African-American to be promoted to Rear Admiral. You know, I know it's a serious promotion there, but the words Rear Admiral has always made me laugh. I don't know what it is. I, I guess in my head someplace, I'm still an eighth grade boy. Premiered on February 1st, 2013, House of Cards. This show was great. Starred Kevin Spacey, Robin Wright Penn, a whole bunch of other people. And then we found out Kevin Spacey's a bit of a perv and had some issues and he was kicked off the show. But in its time, it won six Emmy Awards. And if you've never seen it, it's about a politician and his wife who plot to take over Washington. The show went on a couple seasons after uh, Kevin Spacey got kicked off the show. Robin Wright Penn won a Golden Globe for Best Actress in 2014 in the show. It is a really good show. Too bad it's got that like a uh, tarnish on it of Kevin Spacey's issues. Born on February 1st, 1971, Michael C. Hall. He was the star of that Showtime show, Dexter, the serial killer that actually works for the police. Great show. He was also on HBO Six Feet Under. It's been in a bunch of things, but everyone knows him as Dexter Morgan. He married his sister. Yes, he married his sister from the show, not real life. Um, Jennifer Carpenter, who played his sister on Dexter. Well, you know, they work together, they fall in love and they get married. So it's just kind of weird that you marry your TV sister. Died on February 1st, 2012, we lost Don Cornelius. He was the creator and original host of Soul Train, a syndicated music program that aired over three decades. He was a Marine, and he was on a great episode of the Gary Shandling Show. They were doing um, election night coverage, and he thought he'd have Don Cornelius over to host it. And so every time he left the room, Don Cornelius, he'd come back in. Don Cornelius would have like disco lights going on and people dancing. Gary Shandling would come back in the room, yell, oh, Don, what are you doing? Quit trying to turn this into Soul Train. And this went back and forth. Great episode. Sadly, in the early mornings of February 1st, 2012, police officers responded to a report of a shooting and found Cornelius on the floor of his home on Mulholland Drive of a self-inflicted gunshot wound. His health had been declining for years and they think he may have had dementia when he actually did this. He was 75 years old. All right, that's today's video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Hope you got some information out of it. Now go out, have a great day. Be nice to each other.